It's like Konnichiwa, this is David. Um, I am basically using this short video to answer a question and to get some thoughts together um, to sort of brainstorm. Um, so I am going to be doing a game. Um, I've been talking about this a little bit here and there. Um, and when I say a game, I mean a video game, a digital game, um, as opposed to a tabletop RPG. And in this case, I am going to be doing a, um, the, the genre is uh, Metroidvania, uh, a 2D side and vertical scrolling uh, platform action game, adventure game. And um, I have a few things in place already. Um, not a lot, but this is um, super, super early on in the process. Um, I just spoke with my concept artist, Jenna Fowler, who I've worked with before. Um, she did a lot of our work for um, Amaranthine and um, Farewell to Fear and a couple of other things. Um, she has done work all over the game industry. But she and I um, were talking today about character design for our two main characters in the game. Um, our protagonist and our Dracula analog character. Now, this is um, this is not a play on things that already exist. It's uh, it is in that um, genre, but it's going to be a little bit different aesthetic. Um, neither Castlevania nor Metroid. Um, now. As far as the um, aesthetic goes, it is going to draw heavily from um, post World War II um, Soviet brutalism, and um, but but it's not going to be married to that specific location or that time. It is going to be um, a vaguely Eastern European, um, and it's vaguely after the war, but not World War II, just the war. Um, that way, we can draw from a bigger broader uh, inspiration set we can um, draw from the brutalism movement and then you know up to 100 years before and maybe 50 years after that depends on how we want to go with it uh, i don't want to stay too tied to one exact point in time in the real world uh, we can move a little bit geographically as far as inspirations go and things um, so that's going to be the the basics of the look the great thing about brutalism is, is that a lot of the, the, the architectural style lends itself to platforming games uh, because it's very stark, very boxed. Um, you have a lot of room. Uh, like if you if you look at photos, uh, it basically begs, um, jump on me, um, do parkour on me, that sort of thing. Um, so that's good. Now, the um, the two main characters, the protagonist and the antagonist, um, they are going to sort of be two sides of a coin. The antagonist is going to be our Dracula analog, our, our, our vampire figure. He's going to be a vampire. Um, and he is going to be this, you know, sort of big majestic type. Um, and he, after the war, he takes over the city. Um, he rules it through propaganda and a little bit of fear and a little bit of admiration. Um, he's definitely going to be a, like a charismatic style leader. Um, he's going to have a lot of human followers throughout the city, um, as well as, you know, being an undead denizen of the night with a, an army of darkness. Um, so <clears throat> he is going to be the, the catalyst for plot. He's going to be the enemy. Um, and then we also have our um, protagonist, she is going to be from a, um, a working class suburb or slum of the city. One of the few bastions of the city that is yet to fall um, to his influence. In order to get his, his talons into this slum, he has decided to marry uh, one of the influential people in this village. Um, this means he basically has abducted her and he has drawn her into his lair uh, for this marriage. Uh, he has bitten her one time um, and this, uh, the becoming a vampire in this, this mythology is going to take three bites like Dracula or Vampire Hunter D. Um, and he's bitten her once so she's got a little bit of a taste of the supernatural in her and she escapes. Um, and she flees back to her slum. Um, this is going to be the, the intro to the game. 
um, her flight. Um, she escapes, she gets back to her slum, and then it turns out getting back to her slum uh, is essentially, it breaks a mystical prohibition that has kept our Dracula analog from encroaching on that slum and conquering it. Um, there was some sort of mystical ward in place, and her coming back breaks that seal. So at this point, she has no choice but to work to protect her people by going back into the castle and slaying the monster. Um, as she gets through the castle and does her thing, there's going to be a situation where um, after, you know, boss fight or whatever, she um, is unable to, to kill the Dracula analog, um, and she gets bitten a second time, so she's two-thirds of the way um, to, you know, becoming a creature of darkness, whatever. This is advantageous for her, though, because this, does, this means that it's not the end of the story. It means that um, now she is able to do more supernatural things, and more of the castle, the fortress, is now unlocked to her, um, because she has access to more stuff. Maybe she can become a bat or whatever. Um, so <clears throat> there's going to be a little transition there. Um, very similar to... Um, I'm sorry, Nocturne in the Moonlight, um, Dracula X, or um, Castlevania Symphony of the Night with the um, the Upside Down Castle. Once you get to that point, um, you basically, you have new tools. Um, you can approach the exploration in different ways. So that's the basic foundation for the game that I'm going to be doing. Oh, uh, mechanically, sorry, mechanically. There's, um, there's going to be two ways of um, tackling monsters for... Um, the action aspect of the game. She is going to have a gun and a melee weapon. Probably a sickle, but we're not settled on that yet. Probably a sickle. Um, the gun is a gun. Uh, it'll have limited am ammunition, and she will be able to use it to solve puzzles as well as fight things. Um, if there is a locked door that has a button from afar, she'll be able to hit it with the, the gun if she's willing to waste some of her ammunition on that. Um, It'll also allow me to play around a little bit with um, sort of faux cover mechanics um, because she will have, there will be guards um, that'll have, you know, Kalishnikovs or whatever, and they will be able to fire at her. She'll be able to fire back. Guns will be able to kill humans, dogs, mortal things. Um, however, guns do not hurt the magical, the supernatural. This forces her to engage in close combat with her hand weapon. Um... This basically means that there's two modes of engagement in, in the action scenes. Um, it also means that sometimes you'll have to swap up engagement. You shoot a guard, they would normally die. Sometimes they might come back as, you know, revenants or werewolves or something. Sometimes, and um, I can also engage with the, the gun in different ways. Like, for example, if you fire, maybe sometimes the guard dogs will run away. Um... <clears throat> So we have we have two methods of engagement mechanically there, and currently we are talking a little bit about art styles, um, which is great. Um, Jenna's going to be working on some concept art, and also I am talking to um, musicians a little bit um, about doing that, uh, doing um, some soundtracking, some scoring here, and. The idea is I'm going to build a vertical slice, going to build a little playable sort of pseudo demo, a level that will um, show proof of concept, show what we've got, a little bit of our art, a little bit of our feel. Um, at that point, we'll probably talk about like kickstarting it or something so I can make it a bigger focus um, and do that. But um, that's the general premise. It is going to be the heroine who flees and then has to come back in order to slay our Dracula analog character. Um, there's going to be a lot of room for fun, like, propaganda-style art. Um, very harsh, very stark, very um, edged mm. stuff going on. And then she's going to contrast that by being um, a more of, like, fluid, flowing, organic character. Um... And that is, um, that is the, the basic concept so far. Um, I don't know whether or not I want to introduce like RPG elements. Uh, when I say RPG elements, I mean like um, stats, uh, levels, that sort of thing. I might do that, might not do that. Um, I'm leaning towards it if it is a practical thing for me to do. Um, 
I don't want to have extensive choice in, in the game other than um, your exploration choices. You can go here, you can go here, you can go here, you can go here. Um, but ultimately, you want to go as many places as you can to get as much stuff as you can. Um, but I do have a full story in mind, um, and I have um, ideas for where to take this. Um, a couple of ideas for branching things, comic book video or tabletop game that sort of thing so um it could be a fun opportunity um going to be working on that in over the next couple months in my spare time and we're going to see where that goes but i had a couple people ask so there this is the game that i'm going to be doing um don't have a title for it yet as soon as i get a title i want to do um i want to do a blog um, I want to bring people into this a little bit as much or as much as I can. Um, like for example, I'm going to do a playthrough of um, Nocturne of the Moonlight uh, Symphony of the Night. I'm used to calling it Nocturne of the Moonlight. Sorry, Nocturne of the Moonlight. Uh, I'm going to do a playthrough of it, probably on Twitch or just on YouTube, uh, where I'm going to talk a little bit about design concepts while I play, um, because it's pretty much the perfect example of the genre. And it's, you know, it's a classic game and I want an excuse to play it a little bit more. So I'm going to play it. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the design things that go into it and lessons that I can learn. So, all right. Um, there it is. There's some things that are going to be happening in the future. I'm going to try to make this as transparent as possible and as fun as possible for everyone who is a super, super pre-alpha adopter of the concept. Um, there you go. And um, Matane, everyone.